prepare 90 days. And he was arrested. Saw it out. Simply happened to be doing something that most college students do. Speaking to another young lady. Said hello. Well, that young lady turned out to be an undercover police officer. The Lubbock Police Department had set up a sting operation to try and catch the tech rape. Who MO was to approach women at night and ask them for jumper cables and then force his way into their vehicle. Tim was walking, driving his car, he was not on foot, to go pick up his roommate at a restaurant for work day. And that's where this undercover police officer happened to be. It took a year and a half before he went to trial, because we always thought that charges would be dropped. I couldn't go to Texas Tech. That was done. We all ended up going to other schools out of state and going to UT in Austin. I was 17 years old, a freshman in college, and on September, I got a phone call from my mother saying that they had convicted T. It was disbelief. No evidence. His character was totally opposite of what they tried to portray him to do. But to know Tim, you would have to have met him. But I'll do my best to try to convey to you what type of person he was. He was offered probation the day before trial. And he told my parents, I'm not going to plead guilty to anything that I did not do. They want to give me 25 years, I'd rather serve all 25 years than to admit to something I did not do. Character and conviction, which is the same that's in all of these gentlemen who are in Congress. He was subsequently convicted and sentenced to those 25 years for aggravated rape. On the day he was sentenced, down to the cell, he was crying, saying, why did they convict me of this crime? There was a gentleman in the cell next to him who heard him cry. That man was Jerry Wayne Johnson. The local police had already arrested him for two other crimes that happened the same way. But they chose not to pursue that. They labeled him the tech rapist. And there was no backtrack, no going back. But I'll tell you, while he was in prison, if you could only imagine my sister in law school and her brothers on the news for a week straight as the tech rapists. She wrote to Tim while he was in prison saying that the pressure was too much. She wanted to give up and transfer her back to SMU where she did her undergrad. But he wrote back in a letter telling her, do not leave Tex Law School. I still believe in the justice system, even though it does not believe in me. She finished law school there toward the top of her class. She now serves as the city attorney for the city of Austin. Thirteen years go by. If you've ever been to Six Flags, they have a ride out here. And it's called the Shockwave. That's what roared through our family for those many years. Tim remained the consummate big brother get a letter in the mail that you're going telling me what classes to take, what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing. Okay. And send it back. But I had, on one occasion, I visited with Tim in Tennessee College at the Vito One. He was walking down and I was walking and I could see him. Smiling, and I was just like, 
is he's smiling. Ask me, how are you doing? Your grades this, your grades that, what are you doing? I'm okay. And I asked him, how are you doing? He said, I'm fine. I said, how so? He said, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the roof over my head and for every piece of bread that they give me. He said, I've been lied on and cheated, talked about and mistreated. I've had ups and I've had downs. But all in all, the frowns are now smiling. Every day is a good day. I left that meeting knowing that I cannot have one complaint in the free world. I wake up every morning and he wakes up incarcerated and he does not have a complaint. It was Timothy who told me go work at the state capitol you can make changes there. Back in 1991 yeah, right. But it was his foresight that was in him. Tim was the type of person, when he was in prison the last year before he passed away, the Army had made a miscalculation in his pay. So they sent him a check for $14,000. Within that year, he's been. But I'll tell you, we didn't know what Tim was or what type of person he was. But on December 2nd, 1999, at 4.13 p.m., the three knocks on his cell door. It was not the governor with the party boards of parties or, or, or some other state official. On that day, it was the death act. At that moment is when Tim suffered a massive heart attack and died on the prison cell. We received his personal effects back, and it was in about the size of two shoeboxes. And in there were a few letters, but there was receipt after receipt, after receipt, after letter of thank you from the Catholic Diocese of Dallas, from the Feed the Children. He had given all of his money away. There have been posters, billboards that couple of years ago that said, I am second. But Tim said, I am third. He put his faith first, then he put everyone else ahead of himself, making himself third. But Timothy, we did not know the purpose of his life. My mother said on the day of his funeral, today the world knows him as a sexual, convicted rapist. But one day, they'll know who 